Hi, I'm Phil Berman from Balanced Catamarans, and uh, behind me here you have a, a picture of a swimmer. Uh, my wife and I are big swimmers, and I'm doing this video uh, during the middle of this coronavirus shutdown. I'm here in Fort Lauderdale, and uh, it's pretty frustrating not to be swimming, but uh, I thought I'd spend a little bit of time working on some videos for our Balanced site, and one of those is this question we're often asked is, uh, do you do electric engine catamarans? And um, how come Balance isn't leading the way with doing electric catamarans? And I would say that for us at Balance, we're not at all opposed to doing electric engine catamarans if people want them. Um, our concern is that with a voyaging uh, catamarans, the type of boats that we do, that the disadvantages of the electric engine boats currently um, are greater than the advantages for voyaging sailors. Um, and the, the issue really is one of the capacity of the lithium battery banks to efficiently store enough energy to provide the boats with the range required um, to provide a really significant safety component to the boats. Um, and so our feeling is, is that while the technology of the electric engines themselves is quite reliable, um, it's issues of uh, storage, really, um, and range under power that become uh, important considerations for people that want to be off the grid. I mean, it's one thing to have a Tesla car or an electric car and to plug in every night. Um, and in fact, if somebody asked us to do a balanced catamaran that was just going to do day sailing or would be coming back to a dock every night and plugging in, we'd say, sure, electric engine would probably make a lot of sense. Although I would say how green that boat would be would depend upon where the electrical power was being generated from and how. For example, in China where they're using significant amounts of coal to generate electricity, um, the electric engine day sailing boat would be uh, far less green uh, than one that would be operating in a much more uh, energy efficient state or one, for example, that was using um, more nuclear power or renewables. So. The issue really is for a voyaging catamaran, you come up against this blunt truth that diesel fuel is a far more energy dense um, material than a lithium ion battery. I mean, it's magnitudes difference, okay? So when you look at both the weight and the consumption and the amount of power that you want to generate, you run into real problems unless either A, the lithium batteries become three or four times more efficient in terms of storage, which they may get there, or B, the solar that we're using to top off the lithium banks also gets magnitudes of improvement in terms of its efficiency, which it may do. And so our feeling right now, it balances that Electric engine uh, voyaging uh, boats have a lot of negatives. And so I'm gonna talk just briefly about the negatives in sort of a practical term. So we were asked by climate scientists to uh, create the ultimate green balance 526. And so Anton Detoy, my design partner, spent a lot of time putting in a maximum solar configuration, even solar panels up on the wet deck and the salon and off the davits and you know the maximum amount of solar that we could get on the boat i think it was in the range of like uh, 5,000 watts 6,000 watts without you know causing problems in walkways and things like that and then doing the boat with a large very large lithium bank um and a couple of electric engines um and even under the most ideal conditions where uh the seas were flat you weren't going into a headwind, uh, the most we could get in terms of range, if there wasn't input coming into uh, the lithium batteries, was about 120 miles and only at about four knots. And that's on a very efficient, narrow hull. The balance is a more performance-oriented boat. I mean, at the inefficiencies, uh, the amount of power it would take to push a really heavy sort of production-oriented uh, charter boat would be uh, magnitudes higher. And so when we look at these numbers and we say, okay, well, that's the best case scenario, but what if suddenly if you're trying to push this catamaran against a real head seas where you need a lot more power and, 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 and headwinds, gosh, I mean, your range is going to be really, really limited. 
And so this scientist, he wanted us to do the boat without any form of diesel generation, only renewable. And I th we thought to ourselves, well, okay, uh, you know, we're happy to do that for you, but you're telling us you want to go to the Antarctic, you want to do some research in some, you know, cold places far off the grid. Well, what happens if, you know, there's a, a crazy low front system coming in and you need to skedaddle, you need to get the heck out of the way and you need to do it really fast. Um, I mean, one of the great things about satellite communication and modern weather routing is that sailing is just infinitely safer than it was, you know, 30 years ago in the sense that, you know, we've got a sat phone, we can get a call if there's a cold front approaching and we can get good weather advice on whether to go south, north, east or west and at what speed um, to get out of the way of the worst of a, of a front. We can position ourselves. and. If you can position, if you can be traveling at, you know, 10 knots under power or sail away from uh, an approaching system, well, that, that gives you a huge safety um, advantage over, you know, the, 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 the way it used to be years ago. And I had told the climate scientists, this is looking, you know, we're really reluctant to build you an electric catamaran like this unless you allow us to put in at least some form of backup generator and, and diesel tank so that god you know forbid you're not trapped in some horrible you know storm system down in down in antarctica or in some of a place that you, you really just can't get away that we felt that it was like a safety factor and and i said to him i said look you know electric engines is fine if you just want to use them to get in and out of the dock uh, coming in and out of a harbor or motor, you know, very seldom. But you got to understand that if you approach, you know, the doldrums or something like that, and you need to motor for days on end, and the solar uh, situation isn't ideal, uh, gosh, you know, you, you're going to be either going really, really slow, or you're going to allow yourself to just engage in some drifting. And and really, if you think about it, I mean back at the turn of the century, you know, I, I joked with him, I said, look, you know, um, if you want to sail like Lord Hornblower, you can do that. When you hit the doldrums, you're going to drift until the wind comes up. Uh, and your passage making is going to be a lot longer because there's going to be lots of instances is when you're experiencing, you know, winds under four knots. Um, and that's just that. And But you're also going to live with the safety consequences. I mean, here in Florida, where I am right now, if you go up and down the East Coast, uh, all the way up to New England, back in you know the, the old days, I mean they had uh, sea rescue setups every couple hundred miles. Where if a ship was grounded or stranded offshore, they would send these rescue guys, and they would row out, and they would get a tag line, and they would you know bring people in. I mean, if you go up and fly over Nantucket. Um, uh, in New Bedford in that area in an airplane and you look down at the shoals and all those you know clipper ships and whaling ships that were in there I mean it's a graveyard of boats that would be either because of the fog or the weather the in the inability to sail to windward uh, certainly they couldn't motor so uh, that's why sailing is just so much safer uh, than it was back then and I think that's from two reasons a we have the we can power our boats quickly away from approaching fronts and we have the weather um, uh, information that en enables us to route ourselves you know away from from bad weather the, the thing is is that all of us want to be green and we want to move towards a greener world and certainly we're already starting in a great place with a sailboat and even in a greater place with a performance sailboat because you know many people ask about performance boats well gosh you know how fast can your boat go and you know you can sit there at a boat show and engage in the kind of hyperbole that i see oh yeah you know we went 27 knots on our boat which we have on a 526 but you know that's one bright shining moment in time surfing down a, an extraordinarily large swell and the advantage of the performance boat isn't that it it, it, it can exceed you know it create these really really high speeds as much as in my opinion that you can be doing wind speed in very very light air it's like say seven knots you know or eight knots our boats are doing wind speed or better and the greenest boat really is the boat that sails the best in the lightest possible air but getting back to this whole electric engine thing if somebody wants to have an electric engine boat we are really happy to do it um 
In Cape Town, there are contractors for both Torquedo and Oceanvolt, and we found both those companies to be um, really fair dinkum people, uh, honest. They send us information. I mean, we've been asked to configure boats and we can do it. And the electrician that we work with has done a few electric engine catamarans. We can certainly do it. Um, but at this time, we would say, you really, really must have a backup generator or two if you want redundancy. And so the weight of your boat isn't necessarily gonna be any better than a diesel engine boat with lithium ion batteries. Um, but the larger question for us is, the reliability um, of these electric engine boats. See, electric engines are themselves are really reliable. They're quite simple. If you give them enough juice, they're gonna perform and they're gonna last very long and they're pretty maintenance free, I think for the most part. You have to keep them cool. You have to have a lot of fans on them to keep them, uh, to keep them cool because they do get quite hot when they're running hard. Um, but they also have controllers and it's a question of getting the juice to the batteries with the controllers, the software regulation of the whole system. And if the system's designed right, you know, absolutely they can work, but it's a question really of range. Um, how much range do you want? And when you're really in trouble, there's nothing more reliable than a couple of nice diesel engines that could push you along at 10 knots at 27 RPMs if you need to, you know, to get out of trouble. Our boats really aren't using very much diesel. I mean, our engines are actually, you know, relatively small because the boats are, you know, easily driven. That's another, you know, advantage of a performance-oriented cat. Um, but then finally, there's the issue of cost. So if you want to get an electric engine boat, we've done costings before for a couple of these different systems. And you're essentially going to be paying about two hundred to $250,000 more to get a proper size lithium battery bank, backup generator, fans, system, controllers, electric engines, etc. Um, so if you have the money and that's really what you want to do, well, you know, of course, we're, we're really happy to do it. Um, we would want you to work with one of the contractors that installs these, uh, uh, some of our suppliers in Cape Town, to oversee the process because um, they're a completely different kind of kettle of fish uh, in, in, in terms of you know the, the, the configuration of the design and the concerns about uh, cooling and that sort of thing. Um, it, it's funny though, I mean, I, I do see a lot of hyperbole. I'm, I'm sitting here in Florida and I'm, I had a yacht magazine and there's some big powerboat line, I'm not gonna mention the name of it, and they say to here, um, the running cost of an electric, electric boating is 10 times lower than burning diesel fuel with solar panels on the roof, charging batteries that provide power for equipment functions and appliances, eliminating the need to constantly run the engines or a generator. It's sleek, quiet, and very kind for the environment. 10 times lower than burning diesel fuel. That is complete and absolute hyperbole in my opinion. I will say that it's easier on a pure power cap to create a little bit longer range because you can take a bimini and run it all the way almost the length of the, the boat and have that lather with solar and you don't have a mast and a boom or any shading the issue on sailboats is that we have booms that are over the primary bimini where we have our solar panels so we can put panels on the davits and panels on the coach top but there's a limit to how much we can put on and those panels that are on the coach top are going to be subject to shading. Um, and because they're subject to shading, that's why we use an individual controller for every single panel uh, so that we don't blunt the um, input of the entire bank simply because one panel or two panels are being shaded. That certainly works. Um, but we do think there's a role for electric and we think it's going to move in that direction. We think it's a little bit better for power cats and power boats that are not doing coastal voyaging, you know, going short distances. Um, uh, but, but still, I mean, I think to do any of these boats without some kind of a backup generator or our diesel in the event that the passive uh, gain that you're getting from the solar isn't sufficient. And on our sailboats, obviously you can add wind generators, which are helpful. Um, I think the wind generators myself are particularly helpful in the Caribbean where you're at anchor at night, you're not getting any solar gain and it's windy. And so your, your batteries are getting nice juice uh, from, from them. When you're sailing off the wind though, 
uh, the wind on deck on a you know a performance cat isn't it's probably often going to be less than 10 knots and so obviously the wind generators aren't going to perform as well underway when you're reaching and running which is what you're doing a lot of the time when you're voyaging um, but you know they're still there and then there's hydro generators which attach to the back of the boat and have a little paddle wheel that spins and those also generate quite a bit of power um, but they only obviously generate power when you're underway and the curve goes way up the faster you go which also means that the um, uh, the hydro generators work better on performance oriented catamarans uh, and we're happy to put those on the boat i mean it, obviously if you do a boat with pure renewables solar wind uh, hydro um, and you have a large lithium bank you can get to the point where you're consuming very very little diesel um, on your boat but even as it is our boats aren't consuming a lot of diesel and the way we look at it is the reliability the storage uh, energy storage capacity of diesel over lithium batteries um, it's so significant that when you're voyaging and you want to be completely self-sufficient you're trying to be reliable you're trying to be safe um, and if you have a, a budgetary uh, consideration at all then in our opinion diesel is still the way to go on performance uh, or oriented cats but we're super green at balance and so i'm going to do another little video talking about the green balance and some of the things that we're working on to create even greener boats um, sticking with our philosophy, you know, of um, reliability, uh, performance, and green. So I'll talk to you a little bit later about that. Thanks a lot and stay in balance.